Soften your senses. Ways to become a better speaker, listener, and follower. This episode brought to you by the Jenkins Foundation, sounding the alarm on carbon monoxide poisoning. Learn more at thejenkinsfoundation.com. All right, everyone, thank you for joining us once again. So we are having a follow-up conversation that we started last year at the same time at the National HVAC Art Education Conference. So this year we're spending some time with Chris Halshield. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Thanks for having me. This is a lot of fun. I'm glad you're joining me once again. We had a lot of positive reviews from our podcast from last year. This year we also have Bob Dwyer joining us. How are you doing, sir? Very good. Good conference again. So we have two of the forefront representatives of carbon monoxide safety in our industry, trying to help people be more aware of the scenarios and helping the HVAC industry be more involved with our responsible opportunities to monitor and analyze and um, be at the forefront of training and education in this sector. So Chris, let's, let's dive deeper from where we started from last year. And let's talk a little bit about the unique opportunities that HVAC professionals have in this area. Sure. Well, I think we touched on this last year about uh, kind of the the lack of awareness in a lot of industries about the uh, deficits in the safety industry uh, that are in place to protect people uh, in in home, both homes and uh, businesses, and that there have been some important developments in the code world that we've been involved in in the last few years, including uh, expanding the International Fire Code requirements to include uh, detection, CO detection in all commercial occupancies that house permanently installed fuel burning appliances. Following that, we worked with UL to get the standard for UL's 2034 to be expanded to include uh, commercial occupancies. Prior to that, it just referenced homes in its scope. And uh, with the passage of the fire code, uh, the allowance for the usage of UL 2034 listed devices Mm -hmm. was uh, allowed for smaller businesses. And so uh, we worked with UL and successfully got the scope expanded to include uh, commercial occupancy. So those devices are available as equipment as well to be used to protect people in those spaces. And we're currently working uh, still with UL to address another missing piece in the safety industry that often, you know, the industry is not aware of Mm -hmm. that these deficits exist. And that is the usage of um, low-level devices. Uh, The public in particular is not aware of these devices, not aware of the uh, set limits that exist in UL 2034, that those high-level alarms don't go off. Uh, until a certain uh, level is reached in the environment and how uh, many people can be impacted at lower levels over time. So especially in homes, it's important to be aware of those devices. But these these devices, as as the HVAC community knows, already exist. Uh, You know, you all are using them in your jobs every day. Uh, the, the unfortunate thing for the public is that there is no manufacturing standard for these low-level devices. So we've been working with UL to bring attention to that and hopefully get a standard developed that covers the manufacturing of the low-level monitors so that those can be more successfully marketed to the public, um, that the Consumer Product Safety Commission can recommend them, that we can help people to select an alarm and they can be reassured that the device is going to do what it says it's going to do. Yes. And so these things are all important, uh, you know, in, in, in the HVAC industry as far as, you know, the technicians are really the, they're, they're at the forefront of safety as far as the consumers in that they're, they're out there talking to people on a regular basis when they're servicing appliances and installing them. Perfect opportunities if they have them to convey this information to the public and to businesses in particular, which I think there's a lot of assumptions out there that business owners have this information and are knowledgeable yeah, about they should not site safety and and uh that's that's simply not true for the most part it's not yeah so so um you know any conversations out in the field are of huge value for uh technicians to have you can you can literally save someone's life with a conversation You, you bring up a very interesting point with the ul requirements you know bob you spent a lot of time looking at different types of detectors and shed a lot of light on the fact that not all carbon monoxide detectors are built the same no, they're not. I mean, though there are standards, there are checks and balances uh, in reference to their accuracy. Yeah. However, unless it's being measured against carbon monoxide, 
you don't know if it's working or if it's accurate to the degree that is indicated or that a person needs. The due diligence of the HVAC community to enter buildings measuring carbon monoxide with their instruments that are pre-calibrated have a big advantage, big advantage on a safety issue. You know, if you don't test, you don't find. Yeah, exactly. And you may be in a situation where there's something going on and you become that, that hero, that unsung hero, if nothing else, is still a hero. Yeah, absolutely. You know, every year we have deaths in residential and commercial. And Chris, you can, you, you bring such a, a, a powerful, impactful story of how it has affected your life. And not everyone realizes that they have the opportunity every day to be that person that could save a person's life. Right, right. You know, that's yeah. a lot of responsibility to not be paying attention to. I mean, we, we're there in the homes, in the structures, with the right tools mm -hmm. already in place, and the opportunity to be able to do the analysis and be able to you know, monitor and measure these conditions. And unfortunately, it's not a regular practice in our industry like it could and should be. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and I, I think, again, there's also a lot of assumptions out there. Uh, somebody else is talking to people about yeah. safety, yeah. Uh, which yeah. is... Um, we're finding is not happening. And so the importance of, you know, not only talking to people about proper, you know, maintenance of their um, fuel burning appliances and a safe use of that, but also just as a, you know, hey, uh, do you have carbon monoxide alarms installed in here? Are you aware that, you know, this device, um, if there, if it develops a problem, can start producing this gas that you cannot detect otherwise and, and literally can kill you. And that oftentimes is enough for people to start asking questions, especially um, in these buildings that have uh, maintenance staff, people who I think also the assumption is, is that they're knowledgeable about carbon monoxide right. safety. And these cases that um, result in deaths and injuries in these buildings, which is what happened to my parents in a hotel, you know, they both died. And that similar so things sorry. to, you know, the fact that their uh, the facility was hiring unli unlicensed HVAC people to work on their equipment. They weren't commercially licensed. The maintenance workers at the facility were doing things that they weren't licensed to do. And some of them were not aware of the fact that they should be doing that at all. Exactly. So, uh, you know, there's a there's a variety of ways that I think as um, technicians, uh, you can really make an impact on the knowledge base of the facility that you're in or the homeowner that you're talking to because the people do not know people out in the public all the time who have no idea what a fuel burning appliance is. No, that's uh, right. it, you know, they they uh, don't know what we're talking about. So it, it really is, is at a very basic level that uh, you can have a conversation that makes impact. Yeah, absolutely. You know, we, we learn about carbon monoxide in classes, in schools. We know how to run the devices, but yet because there's not specific standards and regulations on it, it's one of those unchecked, unmonitored portions of our industry that has serious consequences when it is not followed. And so tell me about some of the, the projects and some of the uh, things that you're working on to help bring more awareness into our industry. Well, one of the important things uh, that we try to convey is uh, as often as we can is that uh, just because there has been success at the federal level with code requirements becoming established, especially in the International Fire Code, which right. is followed by many states. Uh, though, in order for those requirements to become effective, they have to be adopted at the state level. Yes, and that doesn't happen, unfortunately, across the U.S. So there are crazy. It's crazy, and there are many places, um, either either statewide or within specific localities in a state that have no detection requirements right. whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. And so uh, the, the people that have fuel burning equipment in their buildings there, uh, no one's giving them information right. about detection because no one's required to do it. Uh, as uh, that That's a perfect example of how the um, HVAC industry uh, could be making inroads into uh, having an impact on education and awareness of the importance of detection devices because those those uh, businesses and um, homeowners are not going to receive that in any other way. No, they don't know. Uh, they don't. And, and there's, unfortunately, as far as state adoption and state requirements, there's no easy way to look that information up. Uh, there's there's really no way to determine no from, a, yes, from yeah. a consumer standpoint. You can't look up, um, you know, what's required in your own area very easily. 
uh, and, uh, you know, and in terms of um, commercial buildings as well. Uh, you know, I mentioned my parents dying in a hotel. Uh, no way to look up uh, which uh, places have detection um, when you travel uh, and stay places. We recommend that people travel with their own alarms. So um, detection is such an important part of safety. I think, you know, in the past, uh, maintenance has really been focused on, which is also important. Yes. Um, but, the, you know, there's no replacement for uh, what detection provides, which is that alert when no one's even thinking that there's a problem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Indeed. So, Bob, tell me a little bit about some quality detectors that you recognize out in the industry. Oh, oh, wow. Um, you know, going with brand names, if they're making a combustion analyzer and a technician utilizes one brand new, no matter what the manufacturer is, they're going to get used to what they're going to get used to. Um, there's a lot of switching of brands that occur. Uh, by technicians um, because of uh, maintenance costs, um, because of not understanding sensor technology. Um, sensors wear out, particularly yeah. oxygen sensors. If a technician is using a combustion analyzer that measures oxygen, um, there's, there's just some care. And the point of it also that is, to me, a, a good point is that the more you use it, the more you learn. Sure. And you stop learning when you stop measuring. In this business, it, then it just becomes you know, kind of an educated action without measurement yeah. verification. And I think uh, evaluating yourselves and evaluating the work that you do is vital. So I think you're gonna get used to what you get used to. There's wireless technology uh, that can you know, be used to its advantage for you know, putting furnaces as an example in actual operating conditions because you can test the furnace with the f cabinet closed and you can take in, have be doing the stack analysis or the exhaust analysis uh, remotely just standing outside or in a mechanical room if it's too tight uh, to w work on with the doors closed you now have uh, wireless technology so i'd explore the companies that are uh, you know gone forward with wireless technology yeah, indeed. So we've seen a lot of advancements in technology. So most of us have the capability of doing very, very accurate analysis, and it doesn't take long. You know, the best way is to zero out our detector before we enter into the structures and take it as part of our, our normal wear. You know, many times, uh, Bob, I see you out in the in the industry walking around with your personal detector, monitoring places that you are visiting. And you know, a lot of people don't think about that, but the, the world around us is... Um, is almost infested with carbon monoxide. Well, you know, I walked into a furniture store not too long ago, uh, actually over a year ago, and um, my detector went off. There was only four or five people in this big furniture barn, and I kind of looked up, and there were a couple of unit heaters uh, hanging, you know, at the far end of, this, of these barns. Right. And so one of the salespeople came up and asked if they could help us. And I said, well, I'm looking for a love seats, but you got, you know, 50 parts per million of carbon monoxide in this building. Yeah. Uh, oh, is that a problem? Uh, well, you know, here it was. So we took a walk and just visually you could see rust coming down yeah. off the. Off the flu pie. Yeah, yeah. And all of that. And I looked at the other one and went and talked to the manager. And uh, there was a, uh, a manager was up there. I asked him when, as this these heaters ever been serviced? And he said, I've been manager here for over 30 years. I don't, no one's ever looked at wow, it. Wow, isn't that crazy? And so, you know, this is perhaps is a common practice. And on the other note, there was a new employee had started working there three or four months earlier. Um, and she started having migraine headaches that she never had before. And there were no alarms, of course, in the this commercial building. And she, uh, one of the salesmen said, well, is that more of a problem because she's pregnant? And so, it, it, yes, it is. And so there's vulnerable people out there. And even a UL 2034 alarm does not meet the workplace standards for exposure to carbon monoxide. If there's a missing link there, it's every place. Even the building we're in is a workplace. So in order to fulfill a OSHA requirement, what's missing is the measurement requirement. Right. Um, so that really, I think, is something that should be addressed also. Yeah, I absolutely agree. 
I also wanted to mention uh, the value of feedback from uh, the HVAC community in terms of what's happening out there. I mean, they see a lot of things in the work that they do, obviously. Yes. And if they uh, if they think that there are things that should be addressed in the safety industry, the codes that currently aren't, uh, we would love to hear about that. I would love to hear uh, from people uh, that work in this industry about what they see out in the field, uh, perhaps what, what more we could be doing education uh, wise with the public or uh, with the safety industry or to help get attention to a problem that that needs attention. So, uh, you know, we have a website, the Jenkins Foundation uh, You can email through the, that foundation. You can email me directly. Uh, I, I um, would encourage um, any kind of communication. It's 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 a safety net that needs to be out there for people. And it's a the two way conversation. Everybody has information of value that can help. Um, fix some of these uh, problems that are resulting in tragedy. Absolutely. I have a good friend, Ben Reed, over at Better HVAC that is really focusing on that exactly that same scenario is being able to address scenarios in our industry and help make consumers more aware of um, the contractors that are doing best practices and the things that should be getting done that aren't always getting done. So I'll have to make some connections for you after That's the conference. Great. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful group of industry professionals that are really focusing on what things need to be done in the industry to elevate our industry and bring more awareness to the things that need some attention. That's great. Excellent. All right. Well, I hope you all enjoy the rest of the conference and I appreciate you hanging out with us today and diving a little bit deeper into carbon monoxide safety and the opportunities for educators and uh, technicians and contractors to become HVAC superheroes and potentially save a life. Absolutely. Thank you, Clifton. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you.